Welcome to my channel, Inch by Inch Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my flying kitten, Tressum. There's a lot of different names for this in tabletop RPGs. I'm making this mini for one of the other people in my group. He's this little dwarf character. So I've decided that I want to try to make it to scale. So I happen to have a stamp, which I made in one of my other videos, that seemed about the right size for the cat. Well, for the cat's body, I should say. So the flying cat, Tressum, that this character has as its pet is Calico. We happen to be fostering a Calico kitten at the time that he got this cat, and we decided it would be funny if it was her. So I am just mixing up some different calico colored clays here. So I've got white, black, orange, and then a lighter pastel orange that I'm mixing, but not blending together. I'm using chunks and pressing them with my tools and my fingers, trying to keep them smooth and separated, but also swirled together just a little bit. So I will roll it a bit in my fingers and roll it a little bit with my tools, but not too much because I don't want the colors to blend. Once I've got a good chunky piece of different colors in the ratio that I'm looking for, that is the size of my stamp, I'm going to take the ball that's for the body and the worm that's going to go in the tail area and just quickly press it into my mold, which I have coated with some talcum powder or baby powder first as a mold release. Once I lightly press this in, I'm gonna then peel it right out and use an X-Acto knife blade to cut off the cat body portion of what I've stamped into. This was really hard because it's so small. I haven't used this method before. I just thought I would give it a try. It was kind of a pain and I thought about it later. It wasn't really the original proportions of a cat that I wanted, but it was kind of good to have as a general way to keep my scale what I wanted. So there were pluses and minuses to it. I, I would do it differently if I did it again, but but it isn't a bad way to go about it. So if you wanted to try something similar, you could. Here I've just stamped a second piece because the, the first piece isn't anywhere near thick enough for our cat. And I will actually add more on later, but this is just me trying to figure out how this will work best. Putting the halves together. collar on, got a little pink spot of clay for the nose, and now I'm baking it. I emphasize carefully a lot in this because here we are with the sad, very burned kitty cat. It ended up not actually being a huge deal because as I said before, it wasn't as thick as I wanted. It just didn't have the body proportions that a cat has. They have pretty large backs and rear ends, especially when they're sitting down. So it should really have like a back hump sticking out and this just didn't with the two skinny halves that I had pressed together. So it basically gave me a hard base to put another layer of the same patch of clay that I'd made before that has the not so Swirled and smushed together, but slightly pressed together uh, different colored pieces that I wanted for my calico. So I add on to the back, I add some thighs on there, make it a little thick, and put on some front legs to give it a real body. And then I just take just white, because the kitten that we had had white paws, and do little white feet. Again, bake carefully. This is really small and thin, so I found that five minutes in my oven was plenty. I think I did 10 minutes the first time, uh, and it was way, way too long. Here I am just making the wings. We decided that we were gonna go with calico wings to match the cat's fur. In our minds, the tressum or flying kitty is not necessarily feathered wings, but maybe sort of furry and feathered. But either way, we thought it would be cool if it had wings that matched its fur. So I just used the finished cat to see about how big the wings should be and make sure that they were equal on both sides. And then I used my silicone sculpting tool to just press into the flat pieces of wings how the feather indents would be. This was much easier and faster than trying to do individual feathers and it worked pretty well.
Here I'm just using some liquid Sculpey and I'm gonna use that to adhere the wings on. I found it was way easier just because this thing's so small to lay the finished cat body down on top of the unbaked wings and that the liquid Sculpey acted like a glue and just sort of sucked it right on and then I just had to press it immediately with my sculpting tool to mold it into the back. And here Here I'm just shaping and fiddling around with the wings a little bit. I decided that the tail should definitely be on the outside. I kind of wanted to do something fun with the tail, but honestly I got worried about it breaking. So I curled it a little bit at the bottom, but I used some more liquid Sculpey to adhere it to its back so it would be less likely to break off at any point. Here's my base. I really like using these bases. This is a great method if you're low on cash and just want a simple way to make a base that's the right size. I took a one inch dowel and I just cut slices and then I sand the edges. I've just taken some brown Sculpey and pressed it really thin on the top and used a ball of aluminum foil as a texture to make it look kind of like dirt or mud. And then I've got some Sculpey that is one of the textured ones. It's got like little fragments of black fibers in it. It works really good for stone. So I just put a couple different balls of that on and then I took a green and used my metal wire tool to give it a plant texture. I wanted it to like moss liquid Sculpey to secure the kitty down and then I'm just adding some little bits of grass kind of pea green Sculpey that I rolled into little worms and stuck on like grass. Here it is ready to bake next to its owner. Again, carefully bake. <laughs> And it's all baked and ready to be painted. So because I used colored Sculpey, I really like how easy this is, particularly on really, really small minis. I recommend if you can use colored clay instead of trying to use the neutral tone or a gray, that it does make painting a million times easier. It can be fiddlier when you're making it, but it pays off in the end. So usually I just do a black wet wash like I'm doing here, and then I might do a white dry brush if I want to, but I usually kind of gauge how dark it is and, and what kind of feel I'm going for. So if it's a monster, a lot of times all I'll do is a black or brown wash. And if it's a character like this is, I'll usually go back with a white dry brush or possibly even some colors and just boost the color to make it a little bit lighter looking. I didn't want my dark wash to be too, too dark, especially on its face. And I felt like it was a little bit too much. So I did just straight water here and hit it from the top with water because that makes the black wash naturally seep down and stay on the lower bits. So it's got that gradient look of light on top and dark on the bottom like you would do with Xenophil highlights. And then I just take some green because the kitty had green eyes and put it on the tip of my silicone sculpting tool, dot the eyes. And then I took a little bit of pink. This is what I'm talking about with going back and boosting some color and do the inside of the ears and the nose and just do a white dry brush on the rocks and wings of the kitty. I decided that the green moss wasn't quite as green as I wanted. Same thing with the grass. I, I didn't really like how it was like a muddy pea green. So I just hit that with some green paint. And here she is done. Her name is Brusetta. She was originally a kitten on a dock and then she ate some snake god meat and suddenly started spreading wings and we found out she's a tressum or a flying cat one, one way or another. Don't know if it's part of the god's ability or what. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to see more of me making my art, please like, follow, and subscribe.